I'm honored to have you here, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome, friends, to our video dedicated to Baron Cobham. Let's dive right in and uncover its wonders. The title Baron Cobham has been created numerous times in the peerage of England. Often multiple creations have been extant simultaneously, especially in the 14th century. The earliest creation was in 1313 for Henry de Cobham, 1st Baron Cobham, Lord of the Manors of Cobham and of Cooling, both in the county of Kent. The de Cobham family died out in the male line in 1408 with the death of the 3rd Baron Cobham, but the title continued via a female line to the Brooke family, which originated near Ilchester in Somerset. Henry Brooke, 11th Baron Cobham, was attainted in 1603 when the peerage became a beyond instead of becoming extinct. In 1916, the attainder was removed and the abeyance terminated in favour of the 15th Baron. The 12th to 14th Barons never actually held the title. This creation became a beyond again in 1951. The second creation was in 1324, when Sir Ralph de Cobham was summoned to Parliament as Baron Cobham. The history of this creation is unknown following the death of the second baron in or after 1378. The third creation was in 1326 when Sir Stephen de Cobham of Rundle, in the parish of Shorn in Kent adjacent to Cobham was summoned to Parliament, again as Baron Cobham. Sir Stephen de Cobham was a cousin of Henry de Cobham, first Baron Cobham of Cobham. This creation became a beyond no later than 1429. The fourth creation was in 1342 when Reginald de Cobham was summoned to Parliament. However, this creation became extinct on the death of the second baron in 1403. The fifth creation was in 1645 when John Brooke was created Baron Cobham, but this title became extinct upon his death in 1660. There was a sixth creation in 1714 in the peerage of Great Britain for Sir Richard Temple, 4th Baronet. Since he had no children, there was a seventh creation for him in 1718, when he was created Baron Cobham again and Viscount Cobham both titles with a special remainder, and the latter two titles are extant. He was grandson of Sir Peter Temple, 2nd Baronet and his wife Christian, daughter of Sir John Lebson and his wife Frances, daughter of Sir Thomas Sundays and his wife Margaret, daughter of William Brooke, 10th Baron Cobham. As we enter this new phase, let's uncover the impact of Barons Cobham of Cobham, in Kent, first creation 1313 on our broader topic. Barons Cobham of Cobham, in Kent, first creation 1313. The Cobhams were a family of lawyers who worked as circuit judges on the air and in local government in various roles such as Sheriff of Kent and Warden of the Sink Ports. John de Cobham died 1300, of Cobham and of Cooling, Constable of Rochester Castle in Kent and one of the Barons of the Exchequer, who married Joan de Septvans died 1298, a daughter and co-heiress of Sir Robert de Septvans of Chartham in Kent. A monumental brass, laid down in 1320, survives in Street Mary Magdalene's Church, Cobham, of Joan Setvans, which displays one of the earliest known specimens of a Gothic canopy. John's younger brother, Sir Henry de Cobham de Circa 1316, of nearby Randall in the parish of Shorn, was the father of Stephen de Cobham, first Baron Cobham of Rundle, a title that was created in 1326. Now, let's dig deeper into Henry Cobham, 1st Baron Cobham, and unveil the hidden treasures it holds within. Henry Cobham, 1st Baron Cobham. Henry Cobham, 1st Baron Cobham, son and heir of John de Cobham and Joan de Setvans. He was summoned by writ to Parliament in 1313, when he is deemed to have been created Baron Cobham of Kent. In he was appointed Constable of Rochester Castle for life. In he was constable of Dover Castle and warden of the Sink Ports. He married Maud de Moreville, widow of Matthew de Columbus and a daughter of Eudes de Moreville. He died at his daughter-in-law's home at Hatch Beauchamp in Somerset, the seat of the Beauchamp family's feudal barony of Hatch Beauchamp, and was buried in the Beauchamp Chapel at Stoke sub Hamnon, Somerset. Let's now shift our focus to John de Cobham, 2nd Baron Cobham d 1355 and explore the ways in which it shapes our perspective. 
John de Cobham, 2nd Baron Cobham B1355. John de Cobham, 2nd Baron Cobham died 1355, son and heir. Elected six times a Member of Parliament for Kent, served jointly with his father as Constable of Rochester Castle. From 1335 he was Admiral of the Fleet from the Thames westward. He married firstly Joan Beauchamp, a daughter of John Beauchamp, 1st Baron Beauchamp of Hatch Beauchamp in Somerset, and secondly to Agnes Stone, a daughter of Richard Stone of Dartford. He was buried in Cobham Church, where survives his monumental brass, inscribed in rhyming French, You who pass round this place pray for the soul of the courteous host called John de Cobham, may God grant him entire pardon. He died the day after the feast of Streak Matu, and the Almighty took him to himself in the year of grace 1354 and cast down his mortal enemies. As we venture forward, let's take a closer look at John Cobham, 3rd Baron Cobham D1408 and its impact on our understanding. John Cobham, 3rd Baron Cobham D1408. John Cobham, 3rd Baron Cobham died 1408, son and heir by his father's first wife. He built nearby Cooling Castle on his estate at Cooling, Kent, acquired by his ancestors in the mid-13th century. In 1362 he founded Cobham College in the parish church of Cobham, a chantry employing a college of five priests. He married Margaret Courtney died 1385, a daughter of Hugh de Courtney, 2nd Earl of Devon of Tiverton Castle in Devon. In 1388 he was one of the lords appellant who impeached various of the favourites of King Richard II, including de la Pole and de Vere. In he himself was impeached for his role as a Lord Appellant and was sentenced to death but pardoned on condition of his exile to Jersey. Henry IV restored the estates and he returned to England, where he died in 1408, at a great age. He was buried in the Grey Friars, London, but his monumental brass survives in Cobham Church, next to that of his wife inscribed in French, from the earth I was made and formed and into earth and to earth am I returned John of Cobham, founder of this place which was previously named. May the Holy Trinity have mercy on my soul. He died without male issue, leaving an only child and in her issue sole heiress Joan de Cobham died 1388, who predeceased her father, wife of Sir John de Lopole of Crishall in Essex and of Castle Ashby in Northamptonshire a first cousin of Michael de Lopole, first Earl of Suffolk. In this segment, we'll be unravelling the complexities of Joan de Lopole, Sujo Fourth Baroness Cobham D1434 and exploring its multifaceted nature. Joan de Lopole, Sujo Fourth Baroness Cobham D1434. Joan de Lopole, Sujo Fourth Baroness Cobham died 1434 granddaughter and heiress of the third baron daughter and heiress of Joan Cobham and Sir John de la Pole. She married five times, firstly to Sir Robert Hemenhold died 1391 of Norfolk, buried in Westminster Abbey, secondly to Sir Reynold Braybroke died 1405 who died on the continent and was buried in Cobham Church, where survives his monumental brass, thirdly she married Sir Nicholas Havoc died 1407, who was buried in Cobham Church, where survives his monumental brass. Fourthly, she married Sir John Aldcastle, Joachoris Baron Cobham, first Baron Aldcastle died 1417, who was hanged as a heretic and traitor. Fifthly, she married Sir John Harpton, died 1458, who survived her by 24 years and was buried in Westminster Abbey, where survives his monumental brass. Joan died in 1434 and was buried in Cobham Church, where survives her monumental brass, commemorating also her second husband Sir Reynold Braybroke, and her six sons and four daughters, with six coats of arms including one of Brooke. She died without surviving male issue when her heir became her only surviving daughter Joan Braybroke, the wife of Sir Thomas Brooke died 1439 of Holditch, Devon. As we progress, let's zoom in on Joan Braybroke, Sujo 5th Baroness Cobham D1442 and examine its role in shaping our overall narrative. Joan Braybroke, Sujo 5th Baroness Cobham D1442. Joan Braybroke, Sujo 5th Baroness Cobham died 1442, the fourth Baroness's daughter by her second husband Sir Reynold Braybrook. 
She married Sir Thomas Brooke, died 1439 of Holditch in the parish of Thorncombe, Devon. The Brooke family anciently de Lobbrook or at Brooke originated at the estate of Lobbrook near Ilchester in Somerset, and later resided at Holditch in the parish of Thorcombe and at Wycroft in the parish of Axminster, both in Devon, both fortified manor houses. Following their inheritance the Brooke family moved to Cobham Hall in Kent. The spotlight now falls on Edward Brook, 6th Baron Cobham D 1464 as we delve deeper into its details. Edward Brook, 6th Baron Cobham D 1464. Edward Brook, 6th Baron Cobham died 1464, son of the 5th Baroness by her husband Sir Thomas I. 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 Brook died 1439 of Holdick, Devon. His grandfather Sir Thomas I. I. Brook died 1418 of Holdick whose monumental brass together with that of his wife Joan Hanham, survives in Thorncombe Church was by far the largest landowner in Somerset and served 13 times as a member of Parliament for Somerset. Joan Hanham was the second daughter and co-heiress of Simon Hanham of Gloucestershire and was the widow of the Bristol cloth merchant Robert Cheddar died 1384, MP and twice mayor of Bristol, whose wealth was proverbial. She held many of Cheddar's estates after his death as her dower and died seized of twenty manors in Somerset and others elsewhere. Her son Richard Cheddar, MP, signed over his large inheritance to his mother and stepfather Sir Thomas I. I. Brooke for their lives, due to the latter having many times endured great travail and cost in defending them during his minority. He married Elizabeth Touchette, a daughter of James Touchette, fifth Baron Audley, by his second wife Eleanor an illegitimate daughter of Edmund Holland, 4th Earl of Kent by his mistress Constance of York, a daughter of Edmund of Langley, 1st Duke of York, the 4th surviving son of King Edward III. In this section, we'll be peeling back the layers of John Brooke, 7th Baron Cobham D1512 to reveal its true essence. John Brooke, 7th Baron Cobham D1512 John Brooke, 7th Baron Cobham, died 1512 was a minor at the death of his father in 1464 when his worship was granted to Edward Neville, 3rd Baron Begovany died 1476, of nearby Merworth Castle, Kent, an uncle of King Edward IV. In 1497 together with Lord Begovany he defeated the Cornish Rebellion at Blackheath, where one of its leaders James Tuchet, 7th Baron Audley, his cousin was taken prisoner. He married twice, firstly to Eleanor Arstall of Suffolk, without issue, and secondly to Margaret Neville died 1506 whose monumental brass survives in Cobham Church, a daughter of Edward Neville, his former guardian. In Street James Church, Cooling, survives the brass of his daughter Faith Brooke d 21 September 1508, inscribed, Pray for ye soul of Faith Brooke late ye daught. A Sir John Brooke, Lord of Cobham, which faith dissessed the XXI day of Septub. Year of Awe. Lord MDVIII on whose sal fu habmaki. As we enter this new chapter, let's navigate the complexities of Thomas Brooke, 8th Baron Cobham D1529 and unravel its multifaceted nature. Thomas Brooke, 8th Baron Cobham D1529. Thomas Brooke, 8th Baron Cobham, died 1529, son and heir by his father's second wife Margaret Neville. He fought at the Siege of Tournay and at the Battle of the Spurs in 1513 and in 1520 was one of the Kent contingent accompanying King Henry VIII to the Field of Cloth of Gold. In 1521 he was one of the twelve barons who tried the Duke of Buckingham. He married three times, firstly Dorothy Hayden, a daughter of Sir Henry Hayden died 1504 of Bakensorp, Norfolk by his wife Anne Boleyn, a daughter of Sir Geoffrey Boleyn, great-grandfather of Queen Anne Boleyn, by whom he had thirteen children, secondly he married Dorothy Southwell, a widow, without issue, thirdly he married Elizabeth Hart, without issue. He was buried in Cobham Church, where survives his monumental brass. As we progress, Let's shine a spotlight on George Brook, 9th Baron Cobham, and examine its intricate interplay within our topic. George Brook, 9th Baron Cobham. George Brook, 9th Baron Cobham, KG, eldest surviving son by his father's first wife Dorothy Hayden. In 1536 he was one of the 27 peers who sat in judgment on and Bowen, 
the second wife of King Henry VIII. He served as Deputy of Calais, a personal possession of the king, under the young King Edward VI, who appointed him a Knight of the Garter in 1549. During the dissolution of the monasteries he received large grants of former monastic lands, including of Cobham College founded in the parish church by his ancestor. He was one of the four lay peers at the trial of Edward Seymour, first Duke of Somerset died 1552, Lord Protector of England, and was one of 26 peers who signed letters patent settling the crown on Lady Jane Grey, but he later recognised the claim of Queen Mary I in 1554 he was besieged in Coolin Castle by his nephew Sir Thomas Wyatt during his Wyatt's rebellion against the Catholic Queen Mary's engagement to King Philip I, I of Spain and in support of placing her sister the Protestant Queen Elizabeth on the throne. Vastly outnumbered Brooke surrendered after eight hours of siege and the bombardment badly damaged the castle. Brooke and his son were briefly imprisoned in the Tower of London on suspicion of having deliberately failed to defend the castle. On 23 November 1555 he entertained at Cooling Castle Cardinal Reginald Pole, recently landed at Dover and on his way, via Canterbury Cathedral and Rochester Castle with a following of 500 horsemen, to Gravesend and thence by barge to the Palace of Whitehall to meet Queen Mary I and to re-establish the Roman Catholic faith in England. Pole would later be responsible for many Protestant martyrdoms. Brooke's magnificent chest tomb and alabaster effigy, with that of his wife and Bray died 1558, one of the two daughters and co-heiresses of Edmund Bray. First Baron Bray, by whom he had ten sons and four daughters, survives in Cobham Church before the high altar. As we enter this new phase, let's navigate the complexities of William Brooke, tenth Baron Cobham, and discover its practical applications. William Brooke, tenth Baron Cobham. William Brooke, tenth Baron Cobham, served as Vice Admiral of Kent. He built the surviving two brick wings forming the West Court, the South Wing between 1584 and 1587 and the North begun in 1591. In his will he provided funds for the establishment of 21 old houses within the abandoned building of Cobham College near the parish church to house poor and worthy local elderly people. The old buildings were accordingly divided up into 21 separate dwellings, each having one room on the first floor and one on the ground floor, with its own entrance door. In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting Henry Brook, 11th Baron Cobham and exploring its intricate connections to our topic. Henry Brook, 11th Baron Cobham Henry Brook, 11th Baron Cobham who married Frances Howard C. 1570-1628, second daughter of Charles Howard, first Earl of Nottingham and widow of Henry Fitzgerald, Earl of Kildare. He was attainted in 1603 for his part in a plot to overthrow King James I, when the peerage became abiont instead of becoming extinct. His lands were forfeited to the crown, although in 1604 King James I granted to his wife Frances Howard a lease for her life of Cobham Hall, where she lived in solitary state until her death in 1628, having in the meantime taken no notice whatever of her husband after his trial, who spent the rest of his life in the Tower of London and died in poverty. The king however granted the reversion of the estate to his third cousin Ludovic Stuart, first Duke of Richmond, second Duke of Lennox who was never able to live there as he predeceased Francis Howard. On his death in 1624 the estate was thus inherited by his heir, his nephew James Stuart, first Duke of Richmond died 1655. In the upcoming section, we'll be shining a light on later holders. William Brooke MP died 1643 but for the attainder a beyond on death William Boothby became heir to the peerage but for the attainder in 1747 Mary Disney heiress but for the attainder a beyond on death Gervas Disney Alexander 15th Baron Cobham abeyance and attainder post-mortem terminated by backdated letters patent to 1916 a beyond on death Robert Disney Leith Alexander 16th Baron Cobham abeyance terminated in 1951 a beyond again on death. The title thus again fell into abiency. The senior co-heir is Simon Rees Shaw, a writer and great-nephew of the last baron. 
In the following section, we'll be immersing ourselves in the captivating world of Baron's Cobham, 2nd Creation 1324. Baron's Cobham, 2nd Creation A Ralph Cobham, 1st Baron Cobham D 1326 John Cobham, 2nd Baron Cobham Aft. 1378 Extinct. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting Baron's Cobham of Rundle, 3rd Creation 1326 to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. Baron's Cobham of Rundle, 3rd Creation A Stephen Cobham, 1st Baron Cobham of Rundle D 1332, neither of his descendants were summoned to Parliament John Cobham, 2nd Baron Cobham of Rundle de Jure Thomas Cobham, 3rd Baron Cobham of Rundle de Jure Reynold Cobham, 4th Baron Cobham of Rundle de Jure D1405 Thomas Cobham, 5th Baron Cobham of Rundle de Jure D1429 A Beyond on Death. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding Baron's Cobham of Sturbro, 4th Creation 1347 and gain a fresh perspective. Baron's Cobham of Sturbro, 4th Creation, a Reynold Cobham, 1st Baron Cobham of Sturbro, C. Reynold Cobham, 2nd Baron Cobham of Sturbro, Reynold Cobham, 3rd Baron Cobham of Sturbro, de Jure, 1381 aft, 1446 Margaret Cobham, 4th Baroness Cobham of Sturbro, de Jure, D. 1466, 1471 Thomas Cobham, 5th Baron Cobham, de Jure, D. 1471 A. Beyond on Death and Cobham, 6th Baroness of Cobham D1526. As we enter this new phase, let's uncover the impact of Baron's Cobham, 5th Creation 1645 on our broader topic. Baron's Cobham, 5th Creation John Brook, 1st Baron Cobham Extinct. Let's now zoom in on Baron's Cobham, 6th Creation 1714 and uncover the hidden gems that lie within. Baron's Cobham, 6th Creation A Richard Temple. First Baron Cobham extinct. Brace yourself for a captivating discussion on Baron's Cobham, 7th creation 1718 as we explore its nuances and implications. Baron's Cobham, 7th creation a Richard Temple, 1st Viscount Cobham C. Viscount Cobham. Now, let's shift our perspective and explore arms through a fresh lens, unlocking new perspectives. The arms of Cobham of Cobham and Calling, both in Kent, Barons Cobham of Kent are gulls, on a chevron or three lions rampant sable. The arms of Brook, Baron Cobham of Kent are gulls, on a chevron argent a lion rampant sable crowned or. I hope you learned something new today. Let me know what you found most interesting in the comments below.